Welcome back to Yahoo Finance. Senator Joe Manchin blindsided Democrats just now, turning his back on the Build Back Better plan in its current form. He says a nearly $2 trillion tax and spend package is not fiscally responsible. Our next guest isn't so sure finding the plan would have a fairly negligible impact on inflation. Joining us to discuss is Kent Smothers, Penn Wharton Budget Model Faculty Director. Kent, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today. We appreciate it. Uh, you, your Penn model data suggests that the plan as it is would add just 0.2% to inflation over the next two years. And you also say if temporary spending measures in the bill were made permanent, it would also have, uh, you know, not much more of an inflationary impact. Walk us through that, if you would. Sure. Uh, so we already are, of course, starting at a pretty high level of inflation for this year, well under 7%. For next year, probably 3 3.5%, depending on where the Federal Reserve comes in. Uh, it's just that most of the inflation is caused by supply restrictions. The Build Back Better itself is going to have a pretty small impact uh, simply because um, the, the first year is mainly child tax credit. That goes away after the first year. And then in subsequent years, things like you know, pre-K education, those take a couple of years to phase in because of the building that is required to support that. So we're talking about something that's fairly smooth uh, over time um, associated with that particular piece of legislation, if it, it, as written you know, on a temporary ba a spending basis. And also help me understand part of the process here. So what you're saying is some of the portions not going to be deployed for uh, a year or two years, three years, totally get that. Yeah. But also in the CBO scoring process, um, there is a negotiation process in Congress among the Senate and the House, uh, whittling uh, certain programs down to fewer than 10 years, to three years, to one year. Um, that kind of games the process with the expectation that maybe Congress will be able to renew that in the future. So if you were to take that into, a, uh, if you were to incorporate that into a model, I'm just wondering what that yields. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So the legislation as written um, it's about a two trillion dollar package, um, but as you pointed out, a lot of the pieces of the legislation, including the child tax credit and lots of other pieces, are temporary spending programs, and so they don't last uh, for very long. And um, that was uh, that keeping those spending programs as temporary also allows them to therefore satisfy uh, what's called the bird rule that's associated with these reconciliation driven type uh, spending programs. When you allow for these programs, however, to be permanent, and that's not what the law actually is, but if in fact you recognize these uh, programs as permanent, then the cost more than doubles. We estimate it to be about 4.6 trillion uh, over 10 years. And so um, that certainly has been a large part of the discussion right now in Washington, D.C. And then, sir, how does it impact uh, consumption expenditures? Yes. So the type of spending matters a lot. Certain types of spend, spending, like child tax credit, tends to focus more on uh, what we call households are more likely to spend the money. High marginal propensity to consume households, uh, kind of non-richer households. On the other hand, some of the other uh, parts of the Build Back Better plan, such as uh, increase in the state and local tax uh, deduction level, um, those who would benefit from that tend to be higher income. And so most of that money would actually be saved. It would uh, partly because it, they pay for that salt increase, deduction increase, by lowering it later in, uh, in the 10-year window. Uh, and so you're going to have very different effects depending on exactly who gets uh, that spending relief, either in terms of a direct federal program or in terms of a tax reduction. So we actually go through 500 different elements of the Build Back Better plan and break it down into basically who it's targeting, who it's, who it's impacting, building up from data to actually see what the, what the consumption uh, impact will be. And then also recognize that some of these programs like such as pre-K education mm -hmm. do require a couple of years to phase in. And just thinking about the impacts on inflation, in theory, the uh, Fed could dial back some of its monetary policy stimulus right. to counteract. But how effective is that really? 
Yeah, I mean, that's the, the whole uh, issue about inflation. It's not really just Congress. Congress has a dance partner. It's called the Federal Reserve when it comes to inflation. And so the question always is, how much will the Fed neutralize through its open market operations any type of demand side of inflation um, that's caused by, uh, by Congress? Uh, during recessions, during uh, uh, times when uh, GDP is below its potential, the Fed typically doesn't focus so much uh, so hard on its 2% rule. We know it; they've been pretty relaxed about that uh, the last few years anyway. Um, but then over time, we certainly do think that inflation is not a longer term issue. It's a shorter term. The Federal Reserve will tend to neutralize uh, a lot of that. So the wild card in this, whenever we talk about inflation, the wild card is always going to be the other dance partner, the Federal Reserve, how much they're going to neutralize. And we think, you know, over the next couple of years, we're talking about a couple, per, um, you know, 0.2 percent, two tenths of one percent. Um, uh, it's, of course, on top of a, a base that's already, you know, this year we're talking about, you know, the average family's going to have to spend about $3,500 more just to get the same consumption that they were getting um, last year. So we're, we're certainly talking about off our, of a bigger base. I, I, both this year and even going forward. But nonetheless, uh, it, the build back better because of the way it phases in and the way it's structured. It's not going to have more than, say, two tenths of 1% impact on inflation. All right. Well, we will leave it there. Kent Smothers, Penn Morton Budget Model Faculty Director, thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. We